we discussed thinking versus knowing uh, briefly, and it seems to be a very important focus of this test. So can you explain the difference between the two and how do the Nagleri general ability tests measure thinking rather than knowing? So this is a very, very important point. And it's important because it helps us understand what our goal is when we're trying to assess a person's level of intelligence. Because so often we confuse knowledge with intelligence. And in the tests that have been used for the last 100 years, it is very typical to find test questions that demand knowledge, which are used to decide how smart a person is. I think that is the major flaw of all the tests that we've used for 100 years that have verbal and, not, and quantitative content. Because for example, a typical verbal test on an intelligence test is a vocabulary test. And so that kind of a test measures knowing. Whereas a nonverbal test, like I described earlier, white square, blue square, white circle, question mark, that doesn't demand knowledge. You don't need to look, label it. You don't need to describe it with any kind of words or said a different way. You could describe it in any language, but it's not the, the, the language that's being assessed. It's your thinking. It's your understanding of the relationship. Another thing to consider when we're talking about thinking versus knowing is that a lot of students, all students have knowledge. There's no question about that. It's the academic knowledge that, um, that we're trying to um, remove from this equation in order to figure out how kids think best. And if that's confounded by academic knowledge, we're not gonna be able to measure how they're thinking. So what we're trying to do is figure out how students think is related to what they already know. So when we're looking at these tests, it's also important to remember that we're looking to identify potential high ability. So if the child does not have that academic knowledge yet, this might not be the best test to use if you're going to look for a highly and profound, a self-contained program for highly and profoundly gifted children who are radically accelerated. This is just a way for us to figure out these kids that we have been historically missing, who've been marginalized in our gifted programs by recognizing how they think, measuring how they think, accepting them for who they are, and then working on expanding that, their, that building upon that, their knowledge, 